Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. To get a high score in the IELTS writing exam, you need to know exactly what the examiner wants. So the first step to achieving success is to understand the marking criteria. In this video, I cover all the basic information you need to know. You'll gain an understanding of the four marking criteria. You'll find out what you need to do to get a high score. You'll see examples of good and poor answers and you'll learn some common mistakes to avoid. We'll start with an overview of the four marking criteria. Here are the four skill areas you'll be assessed on. Task achievement, coherence and cohesion, vocabulary, also known as lexical resource, and grammar. Each carries 25% of the marks. We'll now look at each of these criteria in turn. First, task achievement. Task achievement is your ability to answer the question properly. To score well, you must do three things. Answer the actual question asked, that is, don't just write generally about the topic. Answer all parts of the question and clearly express your opinion and support it with well-developed ideas and, ideally, examples. Here are the marking criteria for task achievement, of which the bullet points on the previous slide are a summary. Pause the video if you want to spend a few moments reading them. Don't worry if the detail seems complex and overwhelming. I'm going to break it down and make it easier for you to understand. I'll also show you exactly what you need to do to get a good score. The easiest way for me to explain and for you to understand these criteria is through some examples. I go into more detail on all the marking criteria on the website and in other videos, so don't worry if they don't make full sense here. See this as an overview. We're going to focus on bands 6 to 8, as these are the levels most students are aiming for. Here's a sample question I'm going to use for illustration. Some people think that newspapers are the best way to learn news. However, others believe that they can learn news better through other media. Discuss both views and give your opinion. We'll now consider this question in relation to the three marking criteria I outlined on slide four. So, in this question, you're required to write about the two opposing views on the best way to learn news. Do not write about news in general. You must answer all parts of the question, that is, you must write about both views and also give your own opinion. If you don't fully cover all these elements, your mark could drop to as low as a band 5. Finally, your own opinion on the best way to learn news must be clearly stated in your essay and supported with relevant ideas and or explanations. Include specific examples if you can. To illustrate some of these points, here are examples from a good and a poor answer to a question asking for solutions to the problem of criminals reoffending. Both answers have two clear ideas, but in the first answer they're not well developed. The second answer has more detailed explanations and also includes a relevant example to back up the ideas. It's fine to make up an example if you can't think of a real one, although it must, of course, be plausible. This one is completely fictitious. Remember that the IELTS writing exam assesses your ability to understand and use language effectively, not your factual knowledge. There are many subjects, such as this one, that you are unlikely to know much about. The examiner knows this, and they're not going to check up to see if the facts you've stated in your example are genuine or made up. Pause the video to read through the two paragraphs and compare them. So, to summarise task achievement, check that you have answered the actual question asked, answered all parts of the question, and stated your opinion and supported it with well-developed ideas and, ideally, an example. Now we move on to cohesion and coherence. These are your ability to organise and present your ideas so that your essay is easy to read and understand. To score well, you must do four things. 
Write an essay with clear ideas that are easy to understand. Organise ideas and information logically. Progress clearly from one idea to another. And use cohesive devices to link ideas, sentences and paragraphs. Here are the marking criteria for cohesion and coherence, of which the bullet points on the last slide are a summary. Again, don't worry if they look complex, as I'm going to simplify them for you. It's helpful to look at the two parts of the marking criteria individually to better understand each of them. Coherence refers to how well the examiner can understand what you write. Several things can affect this, such as grammar mistakes, use of inappropriate words and phrases, and illogical ordering of sentences and ideas. If the examiner can't easily read your essay and follow your ideas, you'll get a low mark for coherence. We'll come on to vocabulary and grammar when we consider the marking criteria specifically related to them. Here we'll focus on the third bullet point, how you order your sentences and ideas. Poor paragraph structure, with ideas set out seemingly randomly, is a common and serious mistake made by many students. Pause the video and read the questions and two paragraphs from the sample answers. See if you can identify why one is poor and the other good. Pause it now and then click play again to hear my explanation. Both answers contain the same ideas, but in the second answer these flow far better from one to the other than in the first answer, where the ideas are set out randomly. A major problem with answer one is the repetition of vocabulary, especially vocabulary used in the question. The first sentence repeats the question word for word, whilst in answer two the question is paraphrased, as it should be. Using appropriate synonyms wherever possible will earn you good marks. Cohesion, on the other hand, refers to your ability to link ideas, sentences and paragraphs using cohesive devices. These are linking words and phrases such as also, furthermore, for example, such as, as well as, because, although, however, especially, therefore, in contrast, similarly. In our poor sample answer, there's practically no use of cohesive devices, but they're used well in the good answer. Here they are highlighted. Pause the video and spend a few moments studying how they're used here. A mistake that many students make in their writing exam is to overuse cohesive devices, thinking that using them in every sentence will gain them marks. This is wrong. It leads to them being used inappropriately, which results in a loss of coherence. This is as serious a problem as underusing them. The third marking criteria is lexical resource, which means vocabulary. So it refers to the words and phrases you use in your essay. To score well, you must use a wide variety of vocabulary, use it correctly and appropriately, and use topic-specific vocabulary. Here are the marking criteria for lexical resource. We touched a little on vocabulary when looking at cohesion and coherence and I'm going to use the same sample answer to illustrate good and bad use of lexical resource. Answer 1 uses a very limited range of vocabulary, with the same words such as work and university being used frequently. This shows a lack of knowledge of topic vocabulary. Pause the video and evaluate this answer for yourself. Answer 2 makes good use of synonyms for topic related words. For example, Work is replaced with employment and job. College is used instead of university. Students instead of undergraduates. And studies instead of course. Pause and read the paragraph again, noticing how these synonyms help the writing to flow well. The use of a wide range of vocabulary in answer two also leads to better developed ideas. As already mentioned, the question statement must be paraphrased in your essay. Answer 1 repeats it using the same words and sentence structure. The question statement reads, 
it is better for students to work before their university study. And here's the opening to answer one. I agree that it is better for students to work before their university study. This will be given a low mark. Answer two, however, is written like this. Taking up employment before studying at university has many advantages for students. This is a much better opening sentence. It says the same thing, but in a different way. Many students make the mistake of thinking that they need to use long, complicated words to score well in the writing exam. This is not the case. You just need to use the right words correctly. You must also be able to spell them correctly. Here's answer two again. You'll notice that it doesn't contain any advanced, complex vocabulary. Rather, it uses appropriate, everyday words and phrases to express the writer's opinion. The correct use of collocations is also important. These are word combinations that sound right together. In answer two, the collocation valuable contacts has been used. However, the collocation doesn't work with most synonyms of the word valuable. For example, we don't say expensive contacts or costly contacts. When learning a new word, be sure to learn its common collocations too. There's a vocabulary section on the website with information on what to learn for IELTS and how to learn it, as well as many pages of topic vocabulary. Follow the link in the notes below this video. So, to summarise Lexical Resource, make sure that you use a wide range of vocabulary, you use it appropriately, you use synonyms to vary your vocabulary, use topic related words, know correct collocations and check your spelling. Finally, we have the grammar marking criteria. These assess your ability to use a range of grammatical structures and to use them accurately. To score well for grammar, you must use complex sentences, produce error-free sentences, and use a good variety of appropriate sentence structures. Here are the marking criteria for grammar. Pause again if you want to read through them. The key to scoring well for grammar is in your ability to produce complex sentences. Complex does not mean complicated, as many students mistakenly think and it has nothing to do with the verb tenses used. A complex sentence is just a sentence that contains more than one clause, often multiple clauses. It includes more than one piece of information. For example, Hugo is studying for his IELTS writing exam and hopes to get a band 7 so that he can apply for a place at the University of Oxford. This sentence contains three clauses each giving a different piece of information. I've highlighted them in different colours. Also note the simple cohesive devices linking the three clauses. They are AND and SO THAT. The number of grammatical errors you make is also a major factor in determining your mark. To get a band 7, around 50% of your sentences must be free of errors. To get a band 8, most of your sentences must be completely error-free. Choosing fairly simple grammar that you can use confidently and competently will help you to achieve this. We'll end with a quick summary of what to do and what not to do to get a high mark for grammar. You should use simple, appropriate grammar structures correctly, use a variety of complex and simple sentences, ensure that your sentences sound natural and check your essay for grammatical errors. You should not try to use as many different structures and tenses as possible. Attempt to impress the examiner with advanced grammar and make basic or systematic errors. That's it for this video on marking criteria. I'll see you in another lesson soon. Bye for now and thanks for watching.